In this part, we're going to add the ability for the player to join the world or the match. So ensure that you have your server running. And with that, let's get started. We're going to add a join world function to the demo and also to the server connection with which we're going to start. At the bottom of the class under connect server async, we're going to add a new function, join world async. So in this one, we are going to return a dictionary. We're going to return the other players that are connected to the world. And we will get that from the matchmaking API. So we want to join a given match in Nakama's terms. And to do that, we need to know which match to join. We're going to use the remote procedure call that we defined in the previous part. So let's create a new variable for going to call it world, let's say, and we're going to get an API RPC object. So it's Nakama API dot API RPC. This is the written type of this function. The RPCs calling functions on the Nakama server is available through the client API, the client being the variable we created a few parts before. So we're going to call client dot RPC async and you want to give it your session object as well as the name of the function that you want to call. So it's going to be get world ID. The third argument after that is a payload. It would be a JSON string that you might want to pass as a message or as some data or metadata to the function. And we're going to wait for that function to be completed. We wrote that function and we know that it should return the world ID as a string. So we can do it like that. We can check if it's not an exception, like the result value that API RPC. So if not is exception, we're going to store our world ID. Uh, let's say we can create a new world ID variable. And we can say world ID is equal to world dot payload. Again, the payload being a string of text that is being sent back by the server. And typically this would be JSON, but in the case of our world ID, it's just a string. Note that you can move that to the top of the script, that world ID, you might want to store it for later. Going back down to join world async. Well, let's get rid of that error right now. We're going to return an empty dictionary from the function. And now we have the ID. We want to join that match if we can. So we're going to call socket dot join match async. And we want to pass the world ID to that because it's going to join that world specifically. As with any asynchronous function, we have to wait for it to complete and we're going to use the yield keyword to do so. And of course we want to store the result value from that. So it's going to be match join result. We can call it that way. Uh, and it's going to be of type Nakama RT API dot match. RT API standing for real time API real-time multiplayer. Now, once again, we can uh, check for exceptions here. So if match join result dot is exception, we can do some exception handling. We're going to get the exception this time and print an error if there's a problem joining the match. This can be useful because you might have an error on the server, but you want to see on the client when you are developing the game, if something failed, if some call failed, so you can debug it see in which line it happened in your code, etc. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to uh, get a Nakama exception from the match join result variable. So match join result dot get exception. And we're going to print an error from that. So we can say there was an error joining the match and we're going to get a status code from the exception. So it's going to be an integer and a message. So we're going to use string interpolation to have the two here. The first one is going to be the exceptions status code. And the second one is going to be the exception objects message. And in those cases, that's where you could also say, I want to return an empty dictionary, for example. However, if it worked, we're going to get a list of presences in match join result, in which case we can loop over them. So for presence in match join result dot presences, we're going to store them in a variable. So we're going to build a dictionary from them. One thing we can do is we can store it as a class variable. So we're going to go to the top of the script, 
and put it under the world ID there. And it's going to be an empty dictionary by default. But now down there in our loop, we can say presences. We're going to use the user ID as the key, like we did in Lua. So presence.userID there is going to be the key is going to be equal to that presence object. And that way we get a dictionary where the keys are the user IDs over which we can loop and the values are the user data where we have a bit more information. And finally, we have to make sure that we return those presences. Now let's go back to the demo.gd file and we're going to add our new join world function at the bottom. So let's create a function called join world and we're going to store the presences, get the presences from our newly created function server connection. So let's create a presences variable. It's going to be a dictionary and we're going to yield on server connection dot join world async. We need to wait for the call to be completed. And once we got that, we're going to write in my case to my debug panel, but you can use the print function as usual. I'm going to say we join the world. We're not doing exception handling here, as you can see, because from that join world async method on server connection, we only return a dictionary while not returning exceptions or errors. And I'm going to write another message here. We're going to show if we have some other connected players. So we can say, we're going to use string interpolation and print presences dot size. Okay, and from our ready function, we can yield on join world and wait for it to be completed. All right, let's run the game and you're going to see zero other connected players. Now I'm going to keep that game running here at that instance and I'm going to make a copy of the project here I'm going to open another instance. I need to change the credentials down there. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. But if I do that and play the game, you will see we have one other connected player and it comes from the other instance of the game I was running. So this is a quick way to check that you are joining the world and that you can have multiple players in the same world because this is counted from the presences that were returned by the server. And that is how you make multiple players join the same game world in a nutshell. We're only covering the basics here, but hopefully that's enough to get you started. And in the next segment, we'll look at much more complex code, to be honest, but how we did it in the final Godot Nakama demo. See you there.